Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis. And we're in Chapter 5, part of this playlist that I'm calling Comparing Population Mean Vectors. So let's jump to today's topic, which is tests on the mean vector mu with the covariance matrix unknown. Okay, so let's review the univariate one sample t test first. So let's assume we have a random sample from 1 to n. Their IID, which stands for independent identically distributed normal variables, uh, mean mu, variance, sigma squared, uh, where both the parameters are unknown. And we want to test is the mean mu naught versus that it's not mu naught. And we use the t uh, uh, test statistic, which is the sample mean minus the hypothesized mean divided by the standard error of the mean, which is the uh, standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And this test statistic follows a t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom, right? We had a sample size of n. And we reject if t is too small, you know, there's some cutoff value, or too big. And it's a uh, t sub alpha over 2 with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And then the other tail is, is the t sub 1 minus alpha over 2 with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And this is just the standard univariate test. Now the multivariate analog is called the one sample hotel is t squared test. So we assume we have a random sample from 1 to n. Now remember y1 is a vector of length p. You know there's, there's p variables that we're collecting on each unit or subject. And it follows a multivariate normal with mean vector mu, covariance matrix sigma. And also, but one requirement to do this test is that n has to be strictly greater than p. So the number of observations has to be more than the number of variables collected on each observation. And the reason is S, our sample covariance matrix, is not uh, invertible. It's what's called singular. So we want to test the null hypothesis is our mean vector some value mu naught. Remember, this is a vector versus that it's not. And we use t squared, which is hotel and t squared. And it's this. And it's really the standardized difference between the sample mean and the hypothesized mean. If this is too large, then we reject the null. We say that, that the sample does not follow this normal distribution. And if it's close, then we say, eh, there's not enough evidence. Okay, so uh, T follows what's called a T squared distribution, hotel and T squared distribution. Uh, P is, I'm going to call it the numerator degrees of freedom. Some just call it the dimensions. And then the denominator degrees of freedom, and some just call it the degrees of freedom, is nu, the Greek letter nu, which is n minus 1. And we reject if t squared is greater than some critical value where you have to look up that critical value in a table, right? There's, and most, uh, yeah, we just have to look it up in the table. And note that t squared, this hotel is t squared, can be viewed as a sample standardized distance between these two uh, vectors, the sample mean vector and the hypothesized population mean vector. Now, this is it. This is hotel and t squared. But in my opinion, there's a better way to do this. And it's a better test statistic. And there's actually some books that just teach that this is the hotel and t squared. Um, and what it is, it's this t squared value. So it's a Mahalanobis distance between the sample mean vector and the population mean vector, or hypothesized population mean vector times this constant, n minus p divided by n p minus p, okay? And so the t squared is, again, what's up here, so I just spell it out. But this is distributed with an f distribution with numerator degrees of freedom p and denominator degrees of freedom n minus p, okay? And there's a connection between the hotel and t squared critical value or rejection region and this f. And it's this, it's a constant times that hotel is t squared. Well, the reason that this one I like better and a lot of, and, and several books like 
better is that F distributions have built-in functions. All statistical programs have an F distribution built in. And so you can calculate. You don't need a book to calculate these T squared values. Okay, so let's look at an example. And the data is from an FTP site, which is given here. And we're going to specifically use the data file called T34Calcium.dat. And the data are partial data from Kramer and Jensen, 1969A. Three variables were measured at 10 different locations in the south. The variables were available soil calcium, calcium exchangeable soil calcium, and Y3 was turnip green calcium. Okay. Now the data is listed in the art illustration below, so we'll look at that. But suppose we want to test the following hypothesis, that the uh, data has a population mean of 15.6 and 2.8, or it doesn't. Now from the sample, we calculate the mean vector and the covariance matrix, so Y bar and S, you know, the sample covariance matrix. And then we want to test the null hypothesis, you know, to, uh, to, or, you know, to, to, to test it, we calculate this statistic. T squared is equal to, and this is the formula as a reminder, 10 observations, sample mean vector minus the hypothesized population mean vector, co sample covariance matrix, again, Y bar minus mu naught. And after crunching those numbers, we get a value of 2.559. Now, the critical value found in the table, um, which is T squared, 0 0.05, 3, and 9, right? So 3 is the P, that's the number of dimensions, and 9 was N minus 1. And it's 16.766. And so our test statistic is bigger than this critical region. And so we reject the null hypothesis and say that the uh, the data indicates that the population mean vector is not what it's hypothesized to be. Um, so using the other statistic, of course, that I like better, is you take n minus p, which is going to be 10 minus 3, and this is going to be 10 times 3, 30 minus 3, 27, times t squared, which we calculated up there, which is 6.364. Okay. Now the critical value found in the table or any other statistical computer software, f of 0 0.05, so we're using an alpha value 0 0.05, numerator degrees of freedom is, is p, and the denominator degrees of freedom is n minus p. And let me, yeah. And that is 4.3468321. And notice the test statistic is bigger than that critical value so we reject the null hypothesis now doing it this the second way which I like better or the first way the results are always a hundred percent the same now for the R illustration I have the FTP data stored in a uh, folder called applied multivariate analysis you know FTP data and then the data, this one is just t34 calcium.dat and you just read read it in. Now, R doesn't, the, the, I don't know if that's a forward slash or backslash, I always get them mixed up, but that's a command function in R. So you have to put two of them. It says the command function, and then you see it again, it says, oh, okay, that's, we need that literally in our, uh, you know, directory. So you have to put two of them. It's kind of wonky in that way, but, um, so, and also there's no, header file there's no header row in the data so we don't know what the variable names are so i go ahead and assign location y1 y2 and y3 to this uh, data frame now y and i print it out and this is the data now the hypothesized mean was 15.6 and 2.85 so we store that in mu we calculate n which is the number of rows in y it's our sample size p is the length of mu that's the number of variable so it's a, a three by one vector and we calculate Mahalanova's distance so it's the column means of our data frame remember we only we want columns two three and four uh, the mean vector is and we want the covariance matrix associated with this remember it's, it's associated with 
y bar. So it's at, we have to divide by n. So it's a sample covariance matrix divided by n. That's Mahalanova's distance, and it's 24.55891. And that's exactly the value that we got in our example above. Now, the test statistic is, um, oh, the, the second test statistic is we take t squared, which is a 24, times this fraction, which is 6.367, which is what we got above. The critical region in the F distribution. Now, we want the right tail to be 0.05, but the Q function is accumulative. So we, so if it's 0.05 to the right, it means 0.95 to the left. Numerator is P degrees of freedom. Uh, uh, denominator degrees of freedom is N minus P. And that value, that critical region is 4.34. And that's the same. And then just to show you that you can calculate hotel is T squared critical region using this F distribution, we just we take it times this constant, which is times this critical region, and we do get the 16.766, so they are related. Okay, I'm right at 11 minutes, so I'm going to uh, call this video done. I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.